We went and rewrote this program in Python here. It does the exact same thing as the C program, but now instead of putting everything into a struct, we've got everything wrapped in classes here. We've got the class foo class. I just named it that so you'd know that the name really doesn't matter. And down here we invoke it so that we can show the window. We don't actually even need to do that. You can just click uh, show a window in the Glade file when you make it. Um, and here we're using the builder just like for the C program. The Glade builder connects our widgets using the XML file that we made earlier. Um, now when we refer to self, that's this whole object thing here that Python has going on. The uh, window object is the window object from the Glade file. That's our text box. That's our other text box. That's the text label. And it just connects all these up so that uh, we can refer to them in our callback functions up here. Um, now, these uh, two signals down here we connected manually because we want to know in entry 1 or entry 2, these two text boxes, um, we want to know which one of those has the focus. So we created our own callback function up here and that just stores this variable here, self-focused. Um, that'll hold the widget that currently has the focus. And then we have this uh, we could print the name of the focused object down here for some debugging info if we wanted to. And that's how we uh, worked that out. And this Python program had another bug. I went and named it gtk.py and uh, then it uh, tried to import itself here, which made a whole lot of interesting errors. So be careful what you name your Python programs. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but it tries to import whatever it finds in the current directory first, so I don't know. I think that's a little weird, because uh, it kind of limits what names you can you can have on your Python program. Um, it's pretty much the same as the C program. We've got uh, file... we haven't done our file save, open, new, anything yet. Uh, We've got our about box working. Uh, web link works. It's about the same. It does about the same thing. Only Python is a little simpler. Um, we had to have two remove events here to uh, make it manageable and use the same interface. And here's our generate hash function also a little simpler in Python. We have uh, imported the MD5 object here and we're going to create a new object, get a hash digest of it, show it in the text box. And, uh, and we can check it later, do the same thing. Here's our key handler that just checks if a uh, key is pressed, looks for the escape key, and then quits. We could actually add more keys to that if we wanted to, but it's pretty much complete. And uh, releasing it under the the GNU General Public License version three, like my other one. I hope it works for you. Works pretty good for me. There's the Python version of it and you can generate a hash of your password. Um, check the hash, shows up as valid. If you change your password, the hash fails. Now on a website, like a message board or whatever, when you sign up for these web forums, the uh, web administrator will have a hash of your password on file. So when you go to change your password, that's why the administrator doesn't know what your password is, because he only has the hash. So if somebody hacks the database and gets everybody's passwords, they only get the hashes. And so they don't know what your passwords are. That's kind of handy. Um, it's kind of a one-way thing. It's really hard to guess a password from a hash. You can kind of uh, 
there's some ways to to work at it but uh, it's really difficult and so that's why it's uh, sort of a, a tool that's used in security systems and uh, web forums and things like that and we're using MD5 you know and I talked about this before but uh, SHA1 is probably better or more popular anyway um, so uh, I don't know have fun with it and uh, keep learning and there's the website cool huh